If you notice, we're all kind of wearing, some of us are wearing stack shirts, um, but we're just a team of 60 people that are super passionate about space and advancing research um, in space technology. And uh, basically what happened was back in October 2016, we... Uh, Olivia and I, who's also the co-president and co-founder, we, we saw a lack in, in like the space community here at Berkeley. There's a, a space sciences lab up the hill, which doesn't really quite attract with uh, the students here on campus. And so, um, basically the reality back in 2016 was there was no existing space research group uh, for, stu for undergrads, and we, we really saw there was no energi like, energy around space here at Berkeley. Um, and so, what we did is try to do all of that um, and really try to group, like, bring great people together to energize space community and work on uh, small steps to move space science, like space research forward. Um, even though we're just students, I think we can all make like, just small steps to these long-term um, like, leaps in technology, even like, if it's just so small. Um, it's like, really important not to think about, um, not to think about things are just going to get worked on without us working on them. And so what we really like to like to do in Stack is think about the technologies that we see in space tech and like so like what we hear in the news, see if they're getting worked on and if they're not, try to make some small step to move it forward. Um, and so that's kind of the motivation uh, around Stack and we really are all about questioning the conventional assumptions. So it's really important not to just take not to just like assume something is getting worked on, or not just assume some technology works. It's really important to take a look at it and then dive into it and work on it and move it forward just as, as best you can. Um, and so, yeah, basically what we ended up doing was kind of create a landscape of research projects and cyclic launch projects. So basically what that means is we kind of created a space program here at Berkeley where we have how-to balloons, microgravity experiments, CubeSat projects, and then far-reaching technology research projects, such as our AI rover and our biosphere project. Um, and so all of those projects kind of get done in like this, this way. We kind of do some background research. Um, we look at the like fundamental physics, if it's a very physics-heavy problem. And then we try to get some funding and connect with the industry. So we have an industry advisory board, which some of them are here today that help us like get connected to people that are working on these technologies or just give us advice like hey like there's something this company really likes to do wants to do but they don't really have the money to work on it um, and so we try to work on some small things like that um, and so we kind of created a community here at Berkeley that uh, works with SSL and specifically the Icon Lab which is up the hill trying to bridge that gap and then uh, we work in Jacobs um, which is like an innovation design studio building and we work there. They're really gracious to give us space to work on all our projects. Um, and we collaborate with UCSB on our CubeSat project. Um, and yeah, we have a really great, uh, a lot of professors on campus that help us like in their labs and things like that. Um, and you can see all the projects that uh, work with the labs out, outside. Um, so to kind of give you an idea of the projects we work on and kind of, I think of it in terms of like rising in altitude and then uh, cheapest cost. So how to balloons really cheap, lowest altitude. We can do those every couple months. We've already launched two this semester. Um, and then microgravity experiments, we have a confirmed launch on Blue Origins rocket. Um, we call it the interstellar microgravity experiments. Um, and so there's like a few research projects inside that. Um, and we're going to try to do a uh, microgravity experiment once a year. Um, and then we'll try to do a CubeSat every couple of years. It's a little harder to do those. Um, and then the more research heavy projects is obviously an autonomous resource rover for the moon. Um, it costs like $800,000 per kilogram to get to the moon. So we don't quite have that money. Um, so it's just a research project, which I think is super important for us to realize. Um, that we are students working on research projects. So you don't have to do stuff in space all the time to kind of move them forward. Because we actually collaborate with NASA Ames on this project. Um, and they come to us and we, we present to them every, like once a month, every couple months, um, and try to help them understand where like the cutting edge is in autonom an autonomous systems and also in resource collection. Um, and so here's just like a few pictures of the work that we've been doing all throughout the school year. 
So in the top right is a picture of our first Kyle 2 balloon um, that you can see out, outside. This is our payload. We're loading some microbes uh, onto a, a microbial exposure unit. Um, and then rotating is our time uh, experiment. And then our simulator down at the bottom moving a, a rover around. Um, and then, yeah, just a lot of other products. So this is like, I'm really proud of all the teams for getting this work to uh, where it is now. So, kind of like the timeline for Stack is back in February 2nd, we had a showcase at the beginning of this semester for us. And then we had our first HAL2 balloon launch in March. And then our, first, our second HAL2 balloon launch was actually, we beat our original date, which was April 30th, and we launched April 28th, which is great. Um, and then we have our microgravity experiment coming up in the summer slash in, um, like, next fall. So we'll see. It's just a function of Blue Origin because um, they're launching the rocket. And then we hope to get a working Earth model, like an Earth test for our AI resource rover um, by September, which is basically next school year. And then we are uh, trying to get our CubeSat launch in 2019 and then have a second microgravity experiment following that. Um, and then I really think by the time that all happens, we'll have a full-scale space program enabled here at Berkeley, where we're reaching every single one of the levels that we want. Um, except for the moon, just because it's so expensive. Um, so, but like with the combination of expensive uh, rocket launches, we actually have seen rockets, the cost of rocket, uh, the cost of lifting a payload on a rocket falling dramatically, um, which really enables work for us students to be, to be done. Um, and what's really interesting is that you see the commercial sector taking up a lot of the uh, launches now, but then like, it, it were right at this junction where the, the government was doing a lot of the launches and now a lot of the commercial is doing a lot of the launches. And so with the competition will come a price fall. And then on top of that, when you have reusability implemented in the commercial and the uh, government launches, the price also falls even more. And so this will be really great for all the work that we're trying to do uh, to get it launched for even cheaper. Um, this is just a, like, a prediction uh, a prediction of the falling launch cost and like based on certain variables uh, the exponential fall in the cost over like uh, the flight, uh, flight rate per year. Um, but yeah, so I think what's really motivating this right now is there's a lot of energy and excitement to go back to the moon. And I think that's really, really great. Um, and so there's all these rovers that were enabled by um, the, like through Moon Express, uh, and like Hakuto and all these great uh, rovers that are trying to get to the moon like as, as soon as they can, it's just a function of the rockets. Um, and then obviously SpaceX with trying to go to the moon. Um, and so the reason why they're trying to do this is because the Earth's gravity well is really large, but the moon's Earth gravity well is, is much, much smaller. Um, and basically if you can manufacture propellant on the moon, you enable larger travel, like larger distance travel like exponentially, I would want to say, because you don't have to bring your propellant from the Earth to wherever your destination is. You now only have to go to the moon and get it off the moon, out of the moon's gravity well, and then to your destination. So this is a, a, a really good and important thing to know for uh, our autonomous resource rover. Um, yeah, so another really interesting thing is the capital that's going into the like high TRL versus the low TRL, it's kind of like bell curved in that like people still like long-term technology in space. And I think that's super important. Uh, it's just kind of like with Stack. We're trying to do cyclic projects that are a lot cheaper. And that's what a lot of the investing is going into right now is satellites and launches. And then far-reaching technology and research is a little less, um, a little less money, but also still getting more, uh, more money than like some of the middle TRL. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why we started Stack and like where we see the industry going with all of our projects. Um, and kind of going forward, we're, we're really looking to kind of standardize all our designs to keep the cost low and make sure we all of our projects are reusable um, and really easy to integrate new research projects into them. So this is like the goal for our Kyle 2 balloon and our microgravity experiment. Um, and then like in parallel with starting Stack around this energized uh, community for space, we are trying to host more space-themed themed events like this. 
Um, and we're really trying to do um, like funding through crowdfunding. And so we have that uh, outside. But I just wanted to like explain one last thing of why we kind of started this symposium. And that is to basically um, bring the more excitement to space uh, community here at Berkeley and to kind of discuss major technological challenges within space uh, in terms of venture funding, uh, founding of a space company, and then also doing research where you take, because a lot of space technology comes out of research and goes into the industry. And so that's kind of why we started this event and what we'll be talking about on the other panels. Um, so with that, I'm really excited to hand it off to MC and I really appreciate you all coming. Thank you.